So I'm Alex Guter, I'm from Endava. I'm um, managing this, this security community in, in the C region, Romania, Bulgaria, and uh, uh, Moldova. And now why I'm here, because we are on blockchain. Since 2017, I got really interested in, in blockchain because you know, if you want to be a security specialist, you really need to be up to date with all the technology. So um, I've started researching by myself in, in 2017. And a couple of years ago, we have developed our own in internal community in Indava on the blockchain to study more. And um, one of these this idea came, how uh, can we use blockchain to help our company? Again, Endava is a company that doesn't uh, sell products, that doesn't create products to sell uh, to others. We uh, you know, uh, provide services. So um, we are not creating this application for selling to someone, but rather to uh, engage our, our colleagues. We have in Endava something called a community. As I was mentioning, I'm a community uh, lead. And in communities, there are technical communities which we study together. It's a, like we are here, we are a community. And um, we want to help other communities uh, and by ourselves to learn about the blockchain because it's a new technology that most of the people don't actually understand. That's, that's one of the, the, the reasons. And having an application which is based on blockchain that can be used internally for all the employees that will actually help us, you know, um, do blockchain as a, main, a mainstream technology rather than being just us, which we, are, which we understand it. But let's let's have this this technology on a different level to be used by other people as well. So, as a short disclaimer, we don't have any tokens and FTs on Endava, so it's not something that you you'll find, you know, on a public blockchain. You want to, we want to buy from Endava. Now, uh, we want to buy stocks now, we go going to and buy tokens. We don't have any tokens, by the way, uh, as a disclaimer. And um, I want to discuss a little bit and to uh, tie up with the previous presentation because it has really good points that I can use in my presentation, <laughs> of course, <laughs> um, about why we are using blockchain uh, to have this uh, application that we can tokenize the employee benefits. Um, why would you would we use a private token instead of using a public solution? Um, what would be uh, the utilities of a token uh, like this? How would we spend it? Um, how, what would be the reward, reward system? Because being internal is not something that you go and buy, you know, to speculate on something or do some some kind of other things. You just reward. You're getting rewarded for having activities inside of the company. You know, having a presentation. Like here, I have a presentation, perhaps I get the word tokens that I can use, you know? Um, and of course, a price marketplace, because again, a token, uh, it's valuable when you can transfer them into something that you can use for yourself. Either it's something uh, non-fungible, which is a collectible and you like it and you want to have it, as something that you can put over there as a collectible, but usually tokens has some kind of functionality, some utilities that you can um, benefit um, of by holding or spending it. So from this perspective, uh, a price marketplace would be something that you can use uh, that, that token to, to spend on. So we, we created a, a small proof of concept. We don't have time to, to show live, show it. Uh, but we had uh, created a live, live, uh, um, on a live, oh, live proof of concept on the uh, Ethereum testnet on Yearly. And um, we actually deployed it on our, our own uh, Endava private Ethereum node, which is accessible only via VPN. It's, it's secure. You can't access it, unfortunately, because it's only for employees. And um, now you are you might be asking, Alex, I researched if there is a similar solution on the market that might be commercial solution that you can buy instead of investing this effort. Uh, well, it's not an effort which we invested to you know create a product that we can sell, but rather to to uh, apply it and learn more uh, because when you put your hands on, you learn about this project. And secondly, um, there might be solutions like this. There might be ideas, but um, unfortunately, uh, I don't. I didn't, haven't seen something that we can apply to. Uh, again, I, uh, 20 years ago, I had this crazy idea. If I let's listen to a, a song at, at the radio, wow, how awesome would it be to have something that will tell me uh, the name of the, the artist and the song. And then you have Shazam after a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, they, they stole my idea. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> ah, someone else had the same idea. So it's not something which is brand new, innovative, cutting edge, but rather something which is practical, something that we can use, and something which is actually helping our colleagues which are not that technical into blockchain. They are technical into other areas, of course, but they're not technical into blockchain and they could use this technology and see the benefit of it. Now, let's discuss a little bit. I don't want to uh, 
uh, to impress you about the, the first slides about what is a blockchain because you already know about that. But what we can use as um, uh, in our uh, private uh, token for uh, tokenizing the, the employee benefits would be the fact that we have this ability natively to have some kind of a distributed ledger, you know, some uh, blocks that you can store the historical uh, actions uh, that occurred. That's kind of interesting because that's the difference between something that you use as a database and something that you use as a blockchain. And um, I, ideally, you, you need to separate clearly those kind of things. Um, of course, you can use uh, a blockchain uh, to um, uh, to store some, some, some information, but you shouldn't use it to store big chunks of data. Secondly, we, sh we can create application on the on database, but yet again, we will need to create additional mechanisms that are needed in order to uh, fulfill the, the, the need. Why would you create a, a, you know, you work more on a technology because it's database, instead of using something which is out of the box on, a, on an existing technology. That's the point. And um, with this proof of concept, actually we have um, uh, tried to, uh, to showcase also to uh, everyone from the company and our potential clients, how we can, you know, use the separation between a database and a, and a blockchain. How how we can, can have a, a, a real use case, you know, rather other than just uh, um, using blockchain because it's a buzzword and we want to use it in our project. You know, that's one of the, the important things. So, it, as a simplified architecture of the of the entire system, it's Ethereum based. I think everyone knows uh, knows the drill, but. Ideally, we'll be focusing on this guy, you know, the one who, which you, is the user of of this blockchain architecture system, and uh, we should be using the uh, the um, out of the box um, technology the technology that we have in order to provide uh, things like having a, a history of uh, of people which won various contests, you know, because as was mentioned, we are a community, we organize contests between ourselves. That was mentioned about the security stuff. Stuff we have on internal capture the flag competition. And we reward people like 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 the ones who who win, um, and that's very um, interesting because it stimulates also uh, learning the learning learning process. Now about the blockchain transaction, everyone knows how how the, the blockchain transactions happen, except with the wallet part because I have noticed that we have uh, uh, EIP four thirty seven nowadays, uh, now which uh, it, it's a little bit different than. Uh, just uh, the seed phrase. It's uh, that uh, uh, new technology that we have, the new uh, Ethereum proposal regarding um, uh, the wallet. But nevertheless, let's discuss a little bit why we use the token. Um, because on the tokens, we can uh, actually uh, print the the utilities of it. You know, uh, token should be should be used for the intended purposes. Not for you know um, just uh, just uh, storing value or transferring value. They should have clear pro purposes, and they can be hybrid. They can have multiple um, utilities that we can use. Now, as I was mentioning, blockchain applications nowadays um, are split between having a, a part with, which which stores kind kind of information into a database, and some areas which are for the smart contracts themselves. This is the, the the classical Web3 application that we all have. And the, the one of the, the things that we need to, to consider is that whenever you think about an application, you should uh, see what business logic comes here and what business logic comes here. You know, don't try to move something from here to, to here or vice versa, because you'll end up defining the purpose. You know, that's, I think that's the, the biggest challenges, challenges for a product which is actually really good in terms of Web3. Um, and this is what, something which uh, we are trying to, to help our, our clients to create. Now, regarding, regarding with the um, private token, yeah, the, 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 the wording is not that good at the moment, but yeah, let me just uh, um, wrap it up around, the, around this. So, um, ba based on blockchainhub.net, which is based on a book, actually uh, the tokens uh, nowadays are more hybrid. You know, they can represent assets and they can represent access rights because you can have a token and if you have it, you might have specific access. So meaning that uh, the tokens can be integrated, integrated with the authorization system, as my colleague was saying uh, about access control risks. So um, in, in this retro retrospect, we have uh, protocol tokens, which are hybrid tokens now, nowadays, which are based on uh, network economics. Um, uh, they, they have also uh, the, the proof of, of the network. You know, either it's a proof of stake, proof of work, and all that. So. In the end, we have those tokens which we can use. How does this work? 
So we have, let's say, big, two big roles. We have the user, we have the administrator. Now, let's start with the administrator because we need to, to understand how the things are created and then how are getting destroyed. Uh, now, the administrator will uh, create a product into, the, into a database, products that can be used in the marketplace. And he, um, he basically, oops, means, uh, means some, uh, some tokens. Those tokens can be minted based on, um, on, the, on the budget. Let's say we have a budget for prizes that we, we have for the event. Let's mint a number of tokens, which they will be used as giveaways and user can then redeem those tokens uh, for prizes. <clears throat> now the, the things got really interested when um, we can uh, actually, um, as a user, once we, we are participating to an event and earn those tokens, uh, we can go on the marketplace itself that hosts the uh, the products, and we can actually spend those tokens by creating an NFT. That NFT can be used then to to redeem a product um, uh, on the you know uh, from our colleagues which uh, are uh, handling the logistics part. One of the biggest challenges is um, if you want to to have to have a price for for a colleague that, that that you really appreciate, how do you know what he likes? Or how do you know how to, to create uh, a such a of diversity of of, uh, of products so that those colleagues are actually enjoying the, the the things that are receiving as gifts? Okay, doesn't defeat the purpose of having a gift for someone who you already know and you want to 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 give him something because you you have the pleasure you know of knowing him. But instead, it's it's about uh, the rewarding uh, of specific activities that you have inside of the company, um, and having a very limited amount of products that you can actually use for myself for instance i i have a colleague and i want to uh, to work him a prize because he won the capture the flag competition now i need, i need to think budget wise what can i can i can i offer and secondly what can be useful and thirdly oh, what might he like or not instead of that why don't we have a marketplace where we have products which have prices in tokens and you can once you earn the, those tokens in various events, you can go and spend them however you like, or you can give them to your colleague because it, it's in ERC20 token. You can give them, you can send them, and th that's all uh, what it matters. So that's the, the difference in, between using the blockchain and using the database. We are we uh, actually want to have um, uh, non fungible, uh, uh, let's say, a non fungible token for representing uh, an asset, which is in real life, because that's it's a unique item. Even though we have multiple copies of, I don't know, um, uh, a Kindle or something like that, you know. Uh, but each each uh, uh, item is unique. You can have uh, an NFT which represents it. And uh, secondly. You can have the, this this uh, tokenization uh, principle when you can actually uh, um, have a, a division. You know, I can't actually uh, go and uh, reward someone a Kindle and a half <laughs> or half a Kindle. I can't do that. You know, I can I award the number of tokens, and if he's incentivized to win more contests uh, internally. By the way, it can be contests which are technical, but also if we organize a ping pong championship in our spare time. Uh, the company might, might help us with uh, the prizes and the pizzas, you know, and yes, please. <laughs> yes, but yeah, if you have the tokens, you can next month decide that you don't need the Kindle anymore. <laughs> you say you other half, yeah. So um, um, this is the main, let's say, the, the, big, the big picture of, of the token flow. Now. How we uh, we would implement this? Now on the on the architecture itself, of course, we have a front end application which is over here, which interacts with uh, with MetaMask, um, and we have the back end part which uh, actually it's able to uh, read from the blockchain, also um, you know interact with the database in terms of uh, the products. Now behind the scenes, we have the uh, the marketplace part, which is a smart contract for marketplace, smart contract for the proxy. A smart contract for the token itself, so ERC20, and the one for uh, the NFT, which is 1155. So this is, let's say, the overall idea. I think it's kind of, kind of simplified, and it's what we need. In terms of the authentication system, uh, that's another another interesting part because authentication in uh, inside of a company, it's usually based on the uh, you know uh, LDAP, OA, OpenAuth2, and all those standards. You don't need to go and place all your 
on your places, you know, the passwords for your account in a company, actually use a token for that. So um, the authentication system, it's uh, uh, the user uh, has the ability to create a wallet and that wallet needs to be binded using the link email uh, uh, diagram over here in order to have a, an email bounded to the, um, uh, the actual address. And with that, having an email bounded, you can bound, of course, furthermore, the, um, the account part from the company, which is basically baked, baked into the, uh, what, it, what we need in terms of authentication. Uh, now, of course, the, one of the challenges would be how do we make this application look very nice and easy to use for someone who doesn't need to know how, what, 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 what are the seed phrases, how to store them securely and all that. Um, that's another another topic because you need to, we need to ha have an application which is very user friendly. You know, uh, like the, the guys from from Multiverse X have. You know, it's really useful that you don't need to remember all those, th those things. It's on your app and you have a lot of things uh, uh, baked into it. On the create product side, we basically um, uh, have the, the ability to create the products in the database. And uh, of course, we have the smart contract for representing those uh, the, those con those uh, products in the database. We have uh, the front end application, the back end application is the front end application which is being used by the the, uh, the person who creates the products who will uh, mean the tokens. You know, so um, um, those two two let's say uh, either it's an app, we can have it as a simple application single application with two uh, roles or two types of applications that is in the future to be implemented. But at the moment. Um, we have the um, the ability also to to sell the NFT. So how the would the flow go is that whenever you are spending your ERC twenty tokens for NFT, which has a value of a specific ERC twenty token, you need to uh, basically uh, send the uh, the tokens, create the NFT, and then update the database because you need also to update the quantity of the products already available. So um, there are some some mechanisms in the, in the behind the scenes that actually helps us. Uh, to implement this kind of functionality using the backend, of course. Now, <clears throat> uh, this is the, the flow for ERC20 token when uh, you want to, of course, um, um, use your, your tokens to uh, buy the, the specific NFT. And you have the, uh, the, the storage over there. Um, the, Endava, the Endava token, which I, I mentioned, it, it's private. So uh, it's being uh, creative, created on the uh, Ethereum private uh, chain inside of, of the company. Uh, and uh, based on, on that, you can have a, a control of um, who has the access on the on the tokens as well. Now, let's talk a little bit more on the utilities part because I do think that the the overall picture of how this application looks like, um, I, I think it's it's quite kind of straightforward. Why would you need this token? Why why what what would be the, the you know the the benefit of having this kind of approach instead of, I don't know, uh, the classical approach, we have a contest, you know, you receive uh, first prize, you receive a Kindle, second prize, I don't know, voucher, and the third prize, uh, I don't know, box of chocolates. Why don't we have this, you know, on a regular basis as we have today? Why we we have this you know, effort of implementing this? Now, that, those, those, uh, there are a couple of things. First of all, we don't have from an event to event the ability to hold the history other than an Excel. <laughs> you know, story in an Excel, yeah, who won the capture the flag last year? Well, our colleague from, from the dev team. Yeah, awesome. Um, but uh, you need to basically have a lot of work uh, for managing those kind of information. Why don't we use a blockchain that automatically when the events are happening, it stores the history of it. And you just need to get data out of it because it's free, it's there, you have it. So that's that's of one of the things that that drove the idea of having this kind of application. So, um, why would you we, we also use a token? Um, I was uh, I don't know, twenty years ago. I, I was at, at a concert. I was in in the Netherlands. Twenty years? No, fifteen years. I'm not. It's, it's fifteen years. Yeah, twenty years. No, no, no. It's uh, just fifteen years. Yeah, I was at a, com a conference in in the in the Netherlands, and in, I don't know if you know that in Romania. 15 years ago, whenever you wanted to buy, a, I don't know, a bottle of water or a beer at a, car, or at a um, you know, a concert, you need to buy, buy with actual cash. Well, over there, you don't do that. You go on a stall and you buy tokens with cash. And you have those tokens and the products cost, cost tokens, which is kind of very useful. And that's the principle here. Again, not an not innovative idea. It's something which we can apply on a specific case in, a, in the inside of the company and to uh, to help actually on the logistic side. 
Yes, that's one of the reasons that they did it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, thanks. That's one of the reasons that that they did it on the concept because it's far easier from a logistical point of view to have, you know, in one place the beverages, in one place the tokens, and that's it. You have the, the whatever it needs to, uh, to, uh, to 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 function correctly. So this is the, the same idea. Why uh, should we have like a logistic nightmare at every event? We should think about prices. We should think, think about when they arrive, how to do it, and all that stuff. When we can use actually tokens, we will award them, you know, on the on the spot, which gives you as as a user, as a as, as a participant, the uh, the ability to to you know, be happy because you receive something when you won, not one week because the uh, it delayed from one retailer or the delay because it got stuck in the customs and all that you, you know you have your prize but believe me it will come in one week <laughs> we really try to to have your prize by by then it's it, there are some situations that might occur from the real life situations you know in real life scenarios therefore in my opinion we have this this uh, this capability from a logistic point point of view to help um, and uh, you get the tokens, and you, we organize from time to time a marketplace. Spend your tokens, and that's it. And also, the company could uh, organize other things like garage sales, you know, all that based on tokens. It's really awesome, and we can use the same system which is, you know, in place already. Um, what would um, what would Endava uh, uh, tokens solve? Again, uh, one of the things that I want to, to mention from the entire list is the blockchain adoption. I think it's one of the most important ones, and in my opinion, people to start adopting technology, it's easier to do it by gaming and by enjoying, rather than being forced to do it. And having this kind of activity now, rather than five years from now, when we might actually have um, far more, more things on the blockchain, like our badges in the office, should be on blockchain, of course, on a private blockchain, you could have a lot of things I did like this. In the future, we might have this technology uh, you know, broaden in our future, and, and the, the adoption, if you don't understand it, might be a little bit reluctant. If you're having this activity, which is for fun, you understand it better. Now, of course, having new case studies for the clients, you know, new clients asking projects, I can actually show them because it's not, you know, um, private uh, information from other clients that I can't show them the project. We have some blockchain engagement, but I really can't show you because we had, you know, agreements with other clients. Now, if being internal, please use it. I can create an account and uh, you can uh, buy yourself, uh, you know, with the tokens, uh, some stuff. Um, the challenges, uh, of course, is the token emission control, um, uh, the private uh, blockchain to be available nonstop. Uh, the reverse, it's impossible, you know, when, whenever someone wants to give the product back, that's a little bit tricky, that's a scenario that we need to think about later. Um, and of course, limited knowledge about the blockchain app use. Now, the token spending, I already talked a little bit. As a user, I participated in various contests, and the organizer actually awards them tokens. Now, how do you spend it? Once you get uh, enough tokens, you can go on the marketplace, internal internal marketplace. You spend the tokens, you get the NFT, which represents a product. With that NFT, it's actually burned when you get to, to, to take the product physically from uh, from the colleagues, which manages the, the logistics part, which is kind of awesome, interesting. And also, it remains in your history. You know, we can have a top with people which won a lot of contests, People which are, you know, very competitive, uh, you know, can create a, a panel of uh, of tops. So it's quite out of the box. The, the entire system with uh, with the user, um, with the, the, the token, the wallet, the product, create product, the acquire product from the um, uh, from the um, logistic manager, uh, burning process, saving the product, and the data, the database, and also for the prices themselves. So it makes the connection between the tokens and the wallet and the actual products. Now the tokenomics, how many time, how much time? Two minutes. Okay, thanks. The tokenomics, of course, price per tokens can be established by budget. There's no speculation, not something that you, you know, uh, I buy, I, I will have the token right now because I will keep it uh, next year will be more valuable. No, no, it's, it's based on, on the budget. Um, uh, we have a limited number of tokens in circulation. There is no no need for a maximum cap. They are created and burned. So uh, this this controls actually the uh, number of tokens which um, exists. And uh, at the end, 
this is how the uh, uh, the proof of concept li uh, looks like. It's of, as you can see, it's, uh, it's on deployed on localhost. Uh, it's uh, it was used. Uh, we it was created using React, uh, Web3, of course. Um, so um, basically, you you'll have the the address over here. You connect to it. Uh, you have the tokens that you you want, and you can go on the on the marketplace to select. To, of course, at the moment we have just vouchers. That, that that's another interesting thing because because if you want a voucher, you can integrate with other third parties that issue the vouchers automatically. So there are a lot of things that you can do. Furthermore, to uh, to create this uh, this ecosystem to be you know uh, as automated as uh, as automated as enjoyable as as you uh, as it can be. So. Um, this is let's say the the, the proof concept that I was uh, doing a live demo a couple of months ago during the dev week uh, uh, that we had internally. Um, many thanks uh, again for our community because as you can see, what you can see over here is not something that I done my, by myself. We have a, a community um, uh, with uh, members from all across the, the globe, and a few of them actually um, contributed, including myself, to develop uh, this uh, this application. Which, of course, we are currently working on um, in the meantime. So that that's all from from my side. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. For that. We have time for one or two questions. Uh, yes, yes. Well, being an internal uh, private uh, chain, it's I basic. You have more validators. Or is that we we uh, it's it's many centralized, meaning that we have like two two machines in AWS, which are. Or uh, spawn up in in Dava AWS, uh, and we have it in a separate, uh, uh, you know, domain yeah, that. Uh, another question. Yeah. Is, do you consider like connecting or bridging anything to like the public blockchain? That's that's a very just an internal experiment. At the, at the moment, that's internal experiment. That's really interesting uh, uh, because you mentioned it. Because, uh, for instance, if you participate and you can you get rewarded from external side, how you can do that? That's an interesting case. And we need to actually think a little bit more about it because when exposing it to the outside, uh, this means that there is room for speculation, and we don't want, want don't want to do that. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I actually uh, we're on the list to to, to try uh, something similar. Actually, on that. you may want to look yeah. into their SFTs because you yeah. can have very very specific memory in each NFT. You know, targeted yeah. to. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. We will keep in touch. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much thank for you. the thank you. Nice talk.